dependent. The brain right, cannot be reduced to the mind. The mind cannot be reduced to the brain. But we, what we can acknowledge is that there's a deep interdependent relationship. Right? And by understanding the, in a sense, the, the hardware of our human situation, by understanding the encasement whereby this subjectivity seemingly arises from nowhere, dwells nowhere, and dissolves into nothing, right? By understanding the evolutionary background, we begin to understand the difficulty of Trump Rinpoche's vision. We begin to understand both the promise and the failure of what it is to work towards evolving oneself individually and what it is to work towards evolving ourself societally. Right? That there are deep obstacles and that those obstacles fundamentally are us and our ability or inability to understand how to evolve our minds how to evolve our experience of our own inner subjectivity. So this is really uh, the uh, journey that we've been trying to make here. This is the journey that I've tried to continue as a result of Trump Rinpoche's uh, empowerment of Ursul Tenzin. Ursul Tenzin's uh, passing the lineage on to me, and then there being huge scandals and conflagrations of confusion and disagreement that have roiled on for years. Right? Pulahari arose out of the debris of that disagreement, which I found very beautiful. You know? mm -hmm. For me, it connects me to the symbol of the lotus, you know, which uh, blossoms in the mud. Similarly, you know, it points to our own lives, you know, our aspiration to realize our own intrinsic beauty, our aspiration to realize our own intrinsic intelligence, our in aspiration to realize our own uh, intrinsic lovingness is mired in the complete tragedy and disaster of our lives all of the confusions and misunderstandings and misstarts and broken promises and broken dreams and dashed hopes, all of it, right, right gives birth to bodhi, bodhicitta, awakened mind. Right? All of this confusion, right, if we sit with it properly, gives birth to something else. If we learn how to mediate the urgency of these uh, evolutionary legacies, if we learn how to mediate them and transform them and actually celebrate them from the perspective of our awakened nature. When we look back to the Buddha, you know, he said, Dalai Lama always likes to start his talks this way, and so does the 17th Karmapa. People say, you know, what is Buddhism? Refrain from evil. Cultivate virtue. Liberate your mind. That's what the Buddha taught. Right? Refrain from evil has to do with the Hinayana perspective. Cultivate virtue has to do with the Mahayana perspective. Liberate your mind has to do with the Vajrayana and the Mahamudra perspective. Refrain from evil. What does this mean? It means refrain from unskillful activity of body, speech, and mind. Speech, in this case, is code in our language of Buddha Dharma for your emotional body, or what we sometimes call a subtle body. Body, speech, and mind could be thought of as gross, subtle, sometimes referred to causal bodies or a body of very subtle mental space. Refrain from unskillful activity of body, speech, and mind. This is the first step on our Dharma path. Second, cultivate 
wisdom and compassion. Virtue. Right? Virtue. What is virtue? Virtue here is not a moralistic uh, characteristic. In many ways, Buddha Dharma um, engages morality only as a skillful method, not from the point of view of an ontological statement about your ultimate status of worthiness or unworthiness. Morality is delinked from any kind of original sin or original uh, unconditional uh, entry into heaven or something. You know? uh, moral or ethical concerns are basically seen as skillful means. So here, cultivate virtue can be translated or transfigured as cultivate insight or prajna, prajna, superior knowing, wisdom, and love together. Right. And third is recognize non-dual suchness as the very basis of personal experience. Liberate your mind from duality. Recognize non-dual suchness. Recognize non-dual suchness as the very basis of personal experience. That's it in a nutshell. For those who are ready to hear that, that's it. There's nothing more to discuss. The reason you're here for some of you is because uh, you're ready to align yourself with that. In particular, you have an intuition that the first two stages of the path, refraining from wrongdoing or refraining from unskillful activities of body, speech, and mind, and the cultivation of wisdom and love or wisdom of compassion, have found sufficient stability within your heart that you're actually more interested more interested in approaching what it means to actually fully liberate your subjective experience within the context of these profound teachings on non-duality, which are at the very core of the Buddhist tradition. In particular, the very core of our lineage. <laughs>